I've done in-depth tutorials on working with the console in Studio One for version three, but there have been some changes made since that time. And so I figured I'd go ahead and put together an uh, in-depth, maybe two-part series on working with the updated console. So let's go ahead and look at that. Now we can access the console by coming up to the top where we have view, and then we can see console here. We can click that to access it. We can also come down to the bottom right corner and click on the mix button. We can also use the uh, shortcut key F3, which is my preferred method. And then as we can see here, this is our console. There's not much going on because we actually don't have any audio tracks or instrument tracks. So I'm gonna press T on the QWERTY keyboard to bring up the add tracks dialog. And then here we have audio for the type. I'm gonna go ahead and change the count to let's say four and then just click okay. And now we have four channels for our audio tracks that we've added that we can work with now. And so now that we have these added, let's go ahead and just start from the upper left hand corner and make our way across and down. So uh, at the very top here, we have a close button where we can close out the console. We then have this up arrow that we can click to detach the console. Then we can move this about freely move it over to an additional or a second monitor that we may have, and we can even maximize by clicking here. If we'd like to reattach the console, we can just click on this down arrow. Now, below these two buttons, we have access to our audio input output setup. We can just click once on that, and then make any adjustments that we need here. I'll cancel. Then we have this down arrow here that we can click to add different types of channels to our console, a bus channel, effects, VCA, and again, we can access our audio input output set up there as well. We then have this wrench icon, and if we click on that, we can make some adjustments to different settings for the console, and we'll actually go into more depth on this at a later time. Now, we actually have a lot of flexibility in what we can view and how we can set up the console. And at the bottom here, we have these two arrows that are facing towards one another where we can change between a small and large view for the console. So by default, it's in a large view. If I click that, then we go down to the small view. I'll return to the large. We then have these below that where we can change from a narrow or change to a narrow view or back to the normal. We then have several buttons below that where we can choose what we're seeing within the console. So if we click on the input buttons, we can see the inputs, the meters for the hardware inputs for our audio device that is currently being used. We have outputs, and if we click that, nothing happens for me because I only have two outs and those are represented with the master channel here. But if you notice this little kind of darker gray area shows up once I click that. So if I click, then you can see that that goes away. Um, so if you had an audio interface with more than two outs and you've set those up within your song, then you would have access to those there. I'll go ahead and pull that back and turn that off. We then have an instrument button where we can show that instrument panel there. So if we have any VSTs loaded, they're gonna show up here. And actually I'll F3 to close out the console, F6 to open up the instruments, and then I'll just drag, drag in a, let's see, a Mai Tai. And then I'll close that out and close the browser. Let's F3 to open up the console again. And now we can see we have our Mai Tai listed here as an instrument that is loaded into our song. And we can double click on that to open up the Mai Tai. We also have other options here that we can access by clicking on the down arrow where we can edit, which will just open up the Mai Tai again. We have expand, we can rename, bypass, favorite, store presets, disable, and remove. We also have a power button that we can conveniently power on and off our Mai Tai. The plus button up above is going to allow us to add any VST instruments that we'd like from directly within the console. But again, if we're not going to make use of this panel, we can always hide it there. And then next we have our channel list, which is going to show all of the channels that we have within our console. We can actually hide this panel by clicking these horizontal bars there. Within our channel list, we can see all of the active channels and we have these little white circles that we can use to show or hide individual channels just by clicking. 
if we had a large group that we wanted to uh, show or hide at one time, we could just click, hold, and drag to show or hide those really quickly. Now we saw previously that we can click on this down arrow to add different channels. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a bus channel as well as an effects channel, just to show that down at the bottom here, we can choose to show or hide by channel type. So this first one here, we can show or hide our audio channels all at once by clicking there. This is our instrument channels and our effects channels and our bus channels. So this is just a convenient way that we can show or hide by channel type all at once if we don't want to show or hide individually. I didn't add a VCA channel, but if I did, then we can uh, show or hide that by clicking there. And actually, let me just go ahead and add a VCA channel there. Now we can see that this is active and we can show or hide our VCA channels by clicking that button there. We then have a remote and some additional controls here, which we'll look at in probably part two. But let's go ahead and move on to some of the parameters and controls on our individual channels. Now I am working with a smaller resolution because I'm working on a laptop. So I'm gonna just hover at the top of the console and click and drag and pull that up. And I'm gonna come just about here and pull that up as well, just so you can see. Once I pull that up, then we can access our ins and outs for the individual channels. So just know that if you aren't seeing that, then you'll need to make those adjustments. Uh, but I think if you're working on say 1920 by 1080 resolution, these will be visible by default. But coming back up to the top here, we have our inserts and we can click on the plus button to add any effects that we may want to use from Personas or any third party providers. Just by clicking on the menu here, I'll choose the bit crusher that's been added and that is visible for editing. And then we can see that that is active here. We can click, double click to access the effect. If we click once, then we're going to see, again, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. And then we have access to some of the basic parameters and we can adjust those by click, hold and dragging horizontally. Now, if I come to this next channel and add, say, let's put a reverb on there, this room reverb, Let's close that out. I'll click once. Now you can see we have additional controls for that that we can access immediately without having to open up the effect itself. And we can make adjustments there. I'll click once to hide those. And I'm gonna click on the bit crusher to hide that as well. Now at the top we have a power button where we can activate or deactivate all of the effects that we have on that particular channel. So if we click that, they'll all be deactivated. Or we could also click on the power button for each individual effect if we would like to do that. Now this arrow, which I didn't cover, is going to give us access to presets uh, that we can load up for our particular channel. And as you can see, after I clicked on that, that loads up a pro EQ and a limiter. Next in line, we have our sends and we can click on the plus button and then choose to uh, send this channel to, we actually brought that effects channel in. I added that earlier. So we could choose to send that to our effects channel, which is here. And we have control for how much of the signal that we want to send to that effects channel, which is basically an effects send. We can then click on this button here to choose between pre-fader on or off. And just note that after I've sent this channel to the effects channel, we see these dashes up above for the effects one and our bus one and VCA one. These are indicators letting us know how many channels are being sent to this particular channel. We see we have that one dash because we only added this one channel. If I were to come to the vocal two, and then let's send that to the effects as well, we can see that we have a second dash. So this is just going to give you uh, an overview of how many channels are being sent to these uh, channels here. Okay, now moving on, we can choose our input by clicking there. And we can even access our audio input output setup there. 
Below that, we can choose where we'd like to send this channel to. So by default, these are gonna be sent to the main, but if I'd like, I could send this to the bus. And now we can see our bus one here. We have that dash, and we know that we have uh, a channel being sent to this bus here. If I click on these dashes, we can actually see the channels that are being sent there. Vocal one, we can see vocal one there. And I'm going to actually send this vocal three to the bus as well. I'll select that. Now here's our bus. We can see we have two dashes. And again, if I click here, we can see uh, we have the vocal one and three that we've sent. If I click on the vocal three, then this becomes active. Now next we have our panning control. We can just click hold and drag left or right to adjust that. We can also click in this field here and manually enter in a value. If we'd like to return it to its default setting, we can always hold control and click once to take that back to the center. Now next we have mute and solo. So we can just click to activate these. We could also press M on the QWERTY keyboard to activate mute and S to activate solo. We have record arm here. Just by clicking, we activate that. We can press R on the QWERTY keyboard to activate that. To the right, we have our monitor. And by pressing U, that will activate monitoring. Now, next we have these LED indicators, and these are gonna show what is currently active for this particular channel. So the top one is going to be for our inserts, and this is act highlighted because we do have inserts that are active for this particular channel. Next we have sends, and this is active because we have sent this channel to our uh, effects one. Now, the bottom one is going to be if we have made use of any mix effects, within the console, and we're gonna cover that in, in a moment. Now we have our fader control here, which we can click, hold, and drag to adjust. We can also click in the field here. This is gonna give us a numeric readout of what we're currently set to, but we can click and manually put in a value. And as with the panning, we can control click to take that back to zero dB. Moving down towards the bottom, we have this little circle icon that we can click once to open up the channel editor. And then if you notice here at the bottom, we have these little rectangular boxes. This is gonna allow us to choose for each individual channel, whether we'd like to have it be controlled by a VCA channel. So since we've added that, these are visible. And if I click, then we can say VCA one, and then now I can control that with our VCA. If I were to right click, and remove this VCA, then you can see that those rectangular boxes go away. Now each of our channels are going to be identified by icons. So this little waveform icon is gonna denote audio channels. Now we have this keyboard that is going to denote our instrument channels. We have effects, we have uh, our bus. This is gonna represent our bus. And then if I right click and then add back our VCA channel, we can see that this represents our VCA. Next, we have control for automation. So by default, this is gonna be set to off, but we can choose our automation mode where we want read, touch, latch, write. We can even click on the add, remove parameters. And we have this dialog where we can add additional parameters or remove them. Now at the very bottom, we have names for our individual channels, and we can change these at any time by double clicking, and then we can rename like so. If we click once, then we can change the color for that individual channel. Now let's move over to our master channel here, and at the very top, we can add a mix effects here. We can add the console shaper, up at the very top of our master channel. We also have inserts that we can add here. We can add post effects. We can see the name for the hardware interface that we're going out on here. And if I click, then we can see more information on that. We have a readout for our level. Mute solo, this is our click track. We can turn that on and off. And you can press C on the QWERTY keyboard to 
activate that as well. So, and this, when you press C on the QWERTY keyboard, it won't change it here. And that's because if you had multiple outs, say if you set up a Q mix, then you wouldn't, this is, pressing C is more of a global control. You can see when I press that, it turns the click track on and off within our transport. But this just provides you individual control for if you had multiple outs and say you had a drummer uh, or a vocalist that didn't want to hear the click track, then you can turn it off on the individual out by clicking here, but still leave it on for the other outs by leaving it on within the transport. So I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm kind of bumbling that. Now, next in the middle here, we have a volume control for the click track on this out. And to the right of that, we can choose whether we'd like to have this channel be in stereo or mono. By default, it's going to be on stereo. We have these double circles or dual circles. If I click once, then we can see we have one, and we're now sending out a mono signal. As we saw with the other channels, we have access to the channel editor with clicking that button there, our automation controls, and then a label for our main. So these are some of the basic controls for the console and we'll wrap up here. And in part two, we're going to go further into routing, working with the v uh, VCAs and buses, uh, more in depth with the inserts and sends. So look out for that. That will be coming up shortly.